One of the two hitmen accused of killing the professor, Luis Rivera, is now cooperating with the prosecution. The man who clammed up for months has now opened up, talking with prosecutors in exchange for a vastly lighter sentence. Prosecutors say Rivera and his accomplice, Sigfredo Garcia, were hired for the alleged hit. But who would want the beloved professor dead? His beautiful ex-wife, Wendy Adelson, also an FSU law professor, told the police that not everything had been amicable in their divorce. Welcome to Crime Circus. This is King Tato of the Latin Kings being confronted on the witness stand by Katie's attorney. Let's see what he's got to say for himself this time. All right, please be seated. We're ready to continue with cross-examination. Mr. DeCoast. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Rivera, the, the bullets that entered Professor Markell's head and ended his life. You bought those, right? Yes, sir. The gun that fired those bullets, you bought them too? Yes, sir. The car that drove to Tallahassee and into his driveway, you rented it? Yes, sir. And the hotel room that you stayed in the night before and planned the murder, you paid for it? Yes, sir. On direct examination, you were asked by the government whether you are a 10-time Convicted felon. You are, right? Yes, sir. And one of those cases is from 2013 in Miami, right? Yes, sir. And you took probation, right? Yes, sir. And you violated it. Yes, sir. You were indicted federally. Yes, sir. Now, that probation violation hearing, that's what a PVH is, right? Yes, sir. So you, 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 you have a case, you take a plea to probation, you violate it by getting federally indicted, and you then have the pending probation violation, right? Yes, sir. And you're facing 15 years on this pending violation. Right. Yes, sir. And that penalty of 15 years can run consecutive to the sentences that you are already serving both here for Leon County and the federal sentence, right? Maybe. So you could do, it's a yes or a no on this one. You know that it's a yes, right? That it can run consecutive after the 19 years. I don't know, but yes. Now, at the time you took the plea in this murder case, you had no idea about that probation violation, right? Yes, sir. You didn't know about it? I didn't know, no. You had two attorneys at the time. They failed to tell you. Yes, sir. Right? The government, who works also for the state of Florida, like the prosecutors in Miami, assistant state attorneys, they didn't let you know either. No. And it's your understanding nobody knew about it. Not your attorneys, not these attorneys, not yourself, right? Yes, sir. And you actually learned when I asked you the question about whether you knew about the pending probation violation. Yes, sir. Now let's go to your next case. The federal indictment. You agree with me that you took a conviction for conspiracy to violate the RICO statute. Yes, sir. Now, that's a RICO statute that's used to prosecute, prosecute large groups committing crimes, right? Yes, sir. You took 151 months prison. Yes, sir. Approximately 12 and a half years. Yes, sir. As a career offender. Yes, sir. That means that you're a career criminal in the, in the federal system. Yes, sir. And, of course, you have the conviction for the murder case here. Yes, One of those 10. Yes. And the charge that you pled to was second degree murder. Yes, sir. And you took a plea of 19 years prison. Yes, sir. So you've got two sentences. You've got 19 years prison on the murder case here. Yes, sir. And you got 12 and a half on the federal case, right? Yes. They're not stacked one after the other. They're running at the same time. Yes, sir. Now, with respect to your federal indictment, you pled guilty, but... You're actually innocent, right? The federal system? The, the federal indictment, the I'm RICO guilty, case. I'm guilty. You are guilty. Do you remember taking a, the first time you took a deposition in this case with Sigfredo Garcia's attorney? Yes. You remember how there was a 
a court reporter present that took down all your words. Yes, sir. Your attorney was present. Yes, sir. They swore you in at the beginning, asking you to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, do you remember being asked the following questions and giving the following answers? Have you ever been involved in a conspiracy to commit an armed robbery? Answer, no. Have you ever been? Answer, I got conspiracy right now with a federal charge. Question, right, your racketeering charge. Answer, my racketeering, so if you want to get that clear, that can be a yes. Question, okay, so yes on the well, I was going to get to your answer. Because that's in my records, it doesn't mean that I did it, but it's all over my records, so question, go ahead. All that you asked me, question, right, answer. It's in my federal record, conspiracy. It be coming to robberies. It becomes everything that you asked me. But I'm telling you no because I didn't do none of that. But it's in my record, so that's a yes. So you have something in your record, but you didn't do it. Answer, I didn't do it. I just got convicted to it. I signed a plea. I took it. You can't fight with the feds. You can't beat them. Nobody can beat them. That's a yes. Okay. You understand that in your deposition, you said that you didn't do anything on the federal case. Yes, sir. So I'll ask you the question again. On your federal case, are you innocent or not? No. And the reason, the reason, well, let's go on. So in your deposition, counsel, lines page 34, lines 20 through 24, Mr. Rivera, do you remember saying the following? Okay, so just to be clear, you signed that because that's what was best for you to do, not because that was the truth, right? Answer, that's not the truth. That's best for me to go ahead and take it and run. You remember saying that in yes. deposition under oath, right? Yes, sir. Basically saying, I did not commit this federal crime, but I took it and ran because you can't fight with the feds. Right? Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, you also remember saying, you can't never beat the feds, man. You can't go to trial with the feds. Yes, sir. Just to be clear, the feds are involved in this case, right? Yes, sir. Special Agent Patrick Sanford and the rest of the FBI. Yes, sir. Understanding your reluctance on the next topic, let's get into it. The Latin Kings. Let's talk first about the size of the Latin Kings. Your, your, the federal indictment that we just talked about was 23 defendants, correct? Yes, sir. But the Latin kings are much larger than just 23 people, right? Yes, sir. Now, as an aside, a guy, Juan Marcos Vega, was a co-defendant in your federal indictment, right? Yes, sir. And he was not a Latin king yet. He was a probationer. Yes. Now, the Latin kings themselves, they are one of the largest and most well-organized gangs in the country. Right? That's true. And you know that because that's in the factual proffer that you signed in the federal case, what you agreed that's to. That's true. They operate in at least 39 states, including Florida. Yes. By your word, they are everywhere. Yes, sir. That includes Chicago, right? Yes. New York. Yes. Key West. Yes. Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Naples. Yes. Tampa. Everywhere. Jacksonville. Yes, sir. Orlando. Everywhere. Tallahassee. Now, the purpose of the Latin Kings, the, the primary source of income is generated through distribution of narcotics, assault, robbery, burglary, and identity theft, right? Yes. Also, the distribution of firearms. Yes. And homicide. Yes, sir. If you could speak up for the jury so that they can hear you, I want to make sure everybody down here can hear you. Now, the members committed these crimes to benefit, promote, and further the interests of the gang, right? Yes. And to increase their own standing. Yes. To get higher up, you got to do more. Yes. Now, going through this quickly, the organization, you guys adhere to a local, regional, state, and national system, right? Yes, sir. The local, like Miami, reports to state, reports to regional officers, right? Yes, sir. Regional reports to state officers. Yes. And then state okay. officers report to the national bosses. Correct? Right? Correct. Now let's talk about your involvement. You've been in it your whole life. Yeah. Since you were 10 years old. Yes, sir. In 2014, you were 31 years old. Right? Yeah. Yes. 
So that's 21 years that you've been involved. Yes, sir. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You were the boss of Miami yes, since sir. the age of 15 or 16. Yes, sir. But I just want to know what this got to do with the case. It has everything. We'll get to that. I don't. It don't got nothing to do with Mr. this. Mr. Rivera, just answer the question. I don't. Please. You were a legacy, correct? Yes. Now, that means because you had family members that were in it as well. Just two uncles. Yes. Correct. Now, your position within the Latin Kings, you were the first crown, right? Yes, sir. What the first crown means is, is that you're the jefe, you're the boss of that area, right? Yes, sir. Now, you're the boss of mostly the whole of Miami. Yes. Between the ages of 10 to 15 or 16, you rose to that position, right? Yes, sir. And you rose through the ranks. Yes. The fifth crown is the secretary, right? Yes. The fourth crown is a treasurer. Yes. Right? The third crown is a enforcer. Yeah. The second crown is a sasike. Yep. And then you reach the top. Yes, sir. Now below these five points of the crown are a whole bunch of soldiers, right? Yes, sir. And you rose through that, still a child by the age of sixteen. Yes, sir. And you held that throne. Yes, sir. For fifteen, sixteen years before you were charged. Yes, I did. Now, to keep that throne, you have to continue to commit crimes and oversee crimes, right? Objection, yes, relevance. Overruled. Yes, sir. Let's talk specifically about your tribe. That's what you refer to your crew as, right? This don't got nothing to do with the case, man. Not my tribe at all. All right, Mr. Rivera, I'll make that determination, okay? You just need to answer the questions, please. We're talking about the size, the amount of soldiers, the amount in your group. Now, you're the boss over roughly... 100 people in 2014, correct? Yes, sir. Now, there's rules to the Latin Kings, right? Yep. There's a rule book. Yes, sir. These are actually all written out. Both the, the purpose, the rules, everything about the Latin Kings is put into what's called the manifesto, correct? Yes, sir. And if you violate those rules, there's penalties for it. Yes, sir. Those include beatings. Yes, sir. You've ordered those before. Yes, sir. It includes things like ink removal, tattoos of Latin kings. Yes, sir. Forcibly to remove them. Yes, sir. Burn them off or cut them off. Yes. Now, snitching is the ultimate rule, right? Yes, sir. As a criminal enterprise, you need to have that rule so that if you're committing crimes with your, your gang members, that they're not going to flip against you. Yes, sir. And you violated that rule. Yes, I did. Now, had you violated that rule on an actual Latin king, no. The penalties would be more severe than what they're seeking against you right now. Oh, he's the same. They're trying to kill you. Yes, sir. They're trying to kill your family. Yes, sir. You'd agree with me that if you were to name a Latin king, because... I'm not naming no Latin king, bro. I know. So, Catherine McBanua, nowhere near a gang member, right? No. Sigfredo Garcia, not a Latin king. No, sir. Wendy Adelson, somebody else you pointed at, not a Latin king. No, You'd agree with me that had you pointed out a Latin king, that the penalty, although the same, may have been delivered in a much more severe manner. Yes, sir. Let's talk about your cooperation. We're done with the Latin kings for now. Okay? Is it is it a fair agreement that after you were charged in this case, you're brought to Leon County, that you're desperate? Desperate like what? Like you're like you're in a jam. You're you're charged with first degree murder, the evidence is strong, you're looking at the death penalty. Yes. Let's go through it. So did you know, and you may not have, that there was media all over the place about the case? Your face was all over 2020, all over the news as involved in the case. Yes. The evidence in the case was strong. You saw it. They have ATM photos of you. They got the Prius. They got cell phone communications. They got people identifying you up there or up here. Yes. That was a problem, right? Yes, sir. You're being held in custody, no bond. Yes, sir. The penalty guaranteed life, if not the death penalty, right? Yes, sir. Now, you had just dealt with snitches on your federal case, right? Yes, sir. A guy named King Nana, the second in command of Florida, way above you, testified against the other 22 defendants in the federal case, right? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. If you know, you can answer. Yes, sir. Nano testified against you, yes. right? Despite your gang's rules, yes. right? 
and the repercussions. Yes, sir. Now you're involved in a case with Sigfredo Garcia, who was not a Latin king. Yes, sir. And not under those rules. Yes, sir. Within your arrest paperwork and discovery, Catherine McVann was named all over it, right? Yes, sir. She's a mother, right? Yes, sir. College graduate. Yes, sir. Works in healthcare. Objection, relevance. Overruled. Yes, sir. Could easily be pressured into testifying against you. Yes, sir. Objection. Calls for speculation. That's speculation. That's, that'll be struck. That's that speculation. Strike. Thank you. Having just gone through a case mere months before where a hardened criminal that lives by a code to not snitch snitched against you, you had a concern that you could be snitched against, correct? Yes, sir. And again, the feds were involved. And in your words, you can't never beat the feds, man. You can't go to trial with the feds. Yes, sir. So you had a choice. You could not cooperate and surely get killed by the government by way of the death penalty, right? Yes, sir. Or at best, get life in prison. Yes, sir. Or you cooperate, right? Yes, sir. You get released while you're still young. Yes, sir. You'll be out in your 40s, right? Like 50. Now, there's a risk that you get murdered by the gang, but you have the biggest gang protecting you, the government, right? Yes, sir. It was the only chance you had to live. Yes, sir. It was either death penalty in life or take the risk, but you got them for protection. Yes, sir. But to get this deal, you had to you had to sell yourself, right? Cooperate, yes, sir. Now, you already knew, and they let you know, they already had Garcia. Yes, sir. The evidence against him was equally as strong, right? Yes, sir. And you had the knowledge from the feds that you had just gone through that to get reductions, you have to help further the theory and get new arrests, right? You knew that. Yes, sir. You had to advance their theory to get time off. Yes, sir. If you could, and, it, and I know that it's, it's, you could be nervous. I want to make sure everybody can hear so if you could speak up or get closer to the microphone. Now, I want to talk about the information that you had. Your arrest warrant, that went out in the media, right? Yes, sir. And your family informed you about it while you were in federal custody. Yes, sir. Jessica, you spoke to her about it, right? Yes, sir. Now, Jessica, she's very smart. She's very intelligent. Yes, she is. She can figure things out. Yes, sir. She read, and it was about you, the, the narrative section of your warrant was about 20 pages, single-spaced, right? Yes, sir. Detailing the government's theory, right? Yes, sir. That Kath and McVanwell was in the middle. Yes, sir. Once you're charged and you're here in Tallahassee, you reviewed your discovery with your attorneys, right? Yes, sir. They, they went over with you all the evidence, all the reports that were written in this case, right? Yes, sir. You know who Craig Isom is, right? Yeah. He's yeah. the... So you, you have a team. You have the federal agent, and then you have the local investigator, right? Yes, sir. And you know that Investigator Isom wrote a bunch of reports detailing the theory of the case, just like your arrest warrant, right? If I knew he wrote, it, wrote, wrote my case? No, no. I'm saying that you get in discovery. <clears throat> your attorneys, when they came to see you, they came with files, right? Yeah. They came with a lot of paperwork, and that included things like police reports, yes, right? Sir. And they reviewed that with you. Yes, sir. And ultimately, what you did in this case... You met with law enforcement, right? Yes, sir. You finally sit down with them come the fall time of 2016, right? Yes. You knew their theory, right? Yes. That Catherine was involved, right? I knew she was involved, yep. And you named the names that they wanted to hear to get a reduction. That's what you did, right? I gave them the names, yes. You gave the two names that were in the reports and in your discovery. Wendy Adelson, and Catherine McVanel, right? Yes. You did exactly what you said you did in the federal case. You, you took it and ran. Yes, sir. Agreed to the government's facts, whether truthful or not. It's true, but yes. You agree that you agreed to untruthful facts? No, everything I said was true, or whatever you're trying to say. But... I'm here trying to figure out what you've said and done, so you need to tell me, okay, please? 
you agreed to the government's facts, right? Yes. Now let's talk about your cooperation agreement. You have an agreement with the state attorney's office in exchange for your testimony, right? Yes. Let's talk about what you get. You get a reduced charge, right? Yes, sir. It went from first degree murder down to second degree murder. Yes, sir. You qualify as a habitual felony offender and that was waived, right? Yes, sir. The death penalty was waived. Yes, sir. Other charges were waived, like conspiracy to commit murder, right? Yes, sir. Solicitation to commit murder. Yes, sir. Possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Yes, sir. You possessed firearms in this case. And they gave you a pass on those charges as well, too. Yes, sir. Are you aware that in the state of Florida, there's a minimum mandatory penalty for a convicted felon possessing a gun? Yes, I do. They also gave you a pass on an aggravated assault with a firearm. Yes, sir. You told them a story about how a guy, Shodrick Nobles, the guy that you bought drugs from and the guy that helped you with the Prius, that he and a bunch of his friends came into the hotel room and that you pulled two guns on him and told them to strip, right? Yes, sir. So you're going to pass on that as well, too. Yes, sir. Now, on this topic of the Prius, and I just thought about this, you said that the gas line was shot. Yes, sir. And the car immediately stopped. Yes, sir. Prius is electric. You know that, right? It was on gas. So, it stopped. You understand it's a hybrid vehicle, though. Yes, it can I run do. on electricity, yes, too. Yes, I do. All right. So we're talking about what you get in this cooperation agreement. You get 19 years. Yes, sir. No minimum mandatory. Yes, sir. Now... Had you been the shooter, you would have gotten a minimum mandatory, right? Yes. A higher minimum mandatory than just possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, you would have gotten a higher penalty, right? Yes, sir. If you said you were the shooter, you probably wouldn't have gotten a deal either. Yes, sir. So you couldn't be the shooter. I'm not the shooter. Let's talk about reductions now. You know what gain time is. Yes, sir. Gain time is that you get a percentage off of your sentence. Yes, sir. That you'll serve, potentially, only 85% of the 19 years. Yes, sir. So instead of a 19-year sentence, you'll do approximately 16. And a half. Yes, sir. 12 and a half already for federal. Mm -hmm. yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. A mere, th if you can keep speaking up, I want to make sure everybody can hear. A mere three and a half years on top of that. So 12 and a half to 16, three and a half years for putting two bullets in Professor Markell's head. That was the penalty that they gave him, right? Yes, sir. Instead of life or the death penalty. Yes, sir. And there's no probation on the back end. No, sir. You're free and clear. Yes, sir. Now, you said on direct examination that you don't think that that the Bureau of Prisons is any better than the Florida Department of Corrections. They're all the same. Do you remember on October 2nd of 2019 sitting in that exact same chair? Yeah, I remember. And do you remember that there was a court reporter right there taking down everything that you were saying? Yes, sir. And that before you said anything from that stand, you agreed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. So, Mr. Rivera, again, we're talking about which facility is better. Do you remember being asked the question, in which facility is better, Leon County or the Federal? Is the Federal Detention Center? Answer, of course. Question, which ones? Answer, the Feds. Question, they got the better food? Answer, I ain't worried about the food, but it's better. Question, but it's just generally better, right? Answer, it's better. Yes. Okay, so the feds are better. It's right? better because I'm, I'm in a facility where I'm getting protected at. It's called protect, where every gangs drop out. It's in that same predicament I'm in. That's why I say it's better. Mr. Rivera, I don't want to confuse the jury here. What we're talking about is that the federal prisons, the federal jails. Oh, they're not better. Your commissary. Just where I'm at right now is better for me. I feel safe right now where I'm at. Where I was before, I wasn't feeling safe. They tried to kill me. Your commissary list in federal includes things like slippers and butterscotch candies, right? Yeah. Yeah. In state, you're lucky to get a towel. I've never been in state, so I don't know. But you're telling this jury that you know that one is better than the other. That's what I hear. Okay. So, again, what we're talking about is what you get from your deal. You get protection from them. And you need it, right? Yes, sir. 
you need protection from the Latin kings. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. You've sent them letters begging for help. Yes, sir, I did. You also need them for help on that probation violation here. Right? Yes, sir. And you've tried to get them to help you so that you don't get penalized because Miami's your home turf. Yes, sir. Miami's different. They were after you for a while, and you know that. Yes, sir. You know the gang's prosecutor specifically knows who you are and was hoping to get a chance to go after you, right? Yes, sir. You need them, right? Yes. yes. They need you. Yes, sir. With that need for protection of your life, be it either 15 years or being killed, that puts you on their leash, right? Yes, sir. Now let's talk about what you have to give. We talked about what you get, the butterscotch candies, the protection. Now let's talk about what you have to give. You have to testify. Yes, sir. You have to testify truthfully, yes. right? Yes. Completely. Yes, sir. And repeatedly. Yes, sir. In this trial. Yes, sir. And in any future trials. Yes, sir. And if you fail, then you're violated by the agreement, right? Yes, sir. And that's what really puts you on their leash, right? Yes, sir. You have to do whatever they say. Yes, sir. Or they violate you. Yes. And what's worse, it's up to them to determine whether you've been violated or whether you violated, right? Yes, sir. Let's talk about now. So we talked about what you get, what you give for the cooperation. Let's talk about your cooperation now. Let's talk about the first name that you named, Wendy Adelson. You said that on July 17, 2014, that you saw her on Trescott. This is the same street that you shot the guy on. Yes, sir. You actually saw her at the same house, right? The same, the same house where you committed the murder. I didn't see her at the house. I seen a few houses from the house. Are you sure? On the same street? You didn't see her walk down the driveway and into the house? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's be clear. You saw slow her at the same... Slow down, slow down, I will, I will. Fair, that's a fair request. You saw her at Professor Markell's house, the same house that you drove down the driveway and shot the guy in the garage. Yes, sir. All right. Now, when you first saw her, she was walking towards you and Garcia in the car. Yes, sir. You saw her face. Yes, sir. Her light eyes. I'm driving. You don't remember seeing her eyes? I seen her. I seen you didn't her. see I her, seen her face. You got light eyes. You didn't see her green. You didn't see her green blue eyes. Yes, sir. You saw her green blue eyes. Green blue eyes. I can put this down now, right? You put it right there. Okay. You saw her blonde hair. Yes, sir. You saw her with two young boys. Yes, I did. Now later in time, we're going to jump ahead right now for a second, but we're going to come back later in time. Law enforcement presented you with a photographic lineup, right? To identify that woman. Yes, sir. And you identified somebody and you signed the picture, right? Yes, I did. Now we'll go back to you in the car seeing this woman. You ask Garcia and Garcia says, that's her. That's Wendy. <coughs> right? Yes, sir. That she came to confirm. Right? Yes, sir. And that's when the, the, this woman that you allegedly saw goes into the house. Right? Yes, sir. She walks down the driveway, the same driveway that you drove down. Yes, sir. With the two little kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And goes into the house. Yes. You ask Garcia again before he calls Catherine, as you allege. And he says that she's here to check on the kids, right? Yes, sir. Now, your testimony and your claims are is that Garcia calls Katie before you get to the hotel, right? Yes, sir. And that this is all before 12 noon, the day before the murder. I don't remember the time, but yes, sir. We refresh your recollection your October 4th interview. Go ahead. Mr. Rivera, can you put that next out? So, Mr. Rivera, you don't remember the time that the phone call was made? Yes, sir, I don't remember. All right. Now, let's talk about connections. First, between you and Sigfredo Garcia. You guys met when you were young, right? Yes, sir. You went to school together? Yes, sir. 
You and Garcia, you went to school together. Yes, sir. Elementary school. Yes, sir. Biscayne Beach. Yes, sir. Went to middle school together. Yes, sir. At Nautilus. No. Where'd you go? Middle school. Jam at opportunity school. Then you went to high school together at Miami Beach Senior High. No. Where'd you go to high school? I went. I went to Miami. I went to Miami Beach Senior High. School. I don't remember seeing there him there. Now it's in high school that you meet Catherine, right? Yes. You guys are young. You're teenagers when you all meet. Yes, sir. All right. You had known Sigfredo since you were little. Yes, Sigfredo sir. meets Catherine in high school. Yes, you sir. meet her through him in high school. Yes, sir. Now you ultimately dropped out. I didn't drop out. I went to jail. I had no choice but not to go back to school. Katie went on to graduate. Yes, sir. Went to college. Yes, sir. Graduated again. Direction yeah. asked and answered. Your Honor, that, if, I, if I could, the second question was graduated from college. The first one was graduated from high school. Right, but we've already right, established you already that asked well. that before, but I'll allow it again if you know the answer to that. Yes. Now let's talk about Garcia and Katie. And they were very much high school sweethearts, right? Yes. Bad boy and the good girl. Yes, sir. And while still young, they have two kids together. Yes, sir. While Katie is still in school. Yes, sir. Now, Garcia, he tried his best to support, to give for the kids, right? Yes, sir. And you would agree with me that within your culture, that that is a main priority. I'm not talking about the gang culture. I'm talking with it within your community, the community that, that Sigfredo Garcia is a part of, just like all communities, that it is a main priority to take care of your children. Of course. Now, Sigfredo Garcia himself, he, he never went to college. Well, maybe no. This is a guy you refer to as your brother? You don't know if he went to college? Yeah, he's smart. I mean, I don't see why. He, no, he didn't go to college. He was not steadily employed. No. Worked odd jobs. Yes, sir. That include dealing drugs. Yes, sir. Consistently. Yes, sir. Now, you sold drugs, right? Yes, sir. Cocaine and marijuana. I've been my whole life. Yes, sir. It's a cash business, right? Yes, sir. At least in 2014, before things like Venmo, if you don't know what that is, or cash apps, wow. everything, when people bought drugs, they gave you cash, right? Yes, sir. Now, on at least one occasion, you've robbed drug dealers with Sigfredo Garcia. Objection, relevance? Overruled. It's called a drug rip, right? Yes, sir. You go to a drug dealer's house, you go in, you steal their stash and their money. Yes, sir. And from that, you get cash. Yes, sir. Now, ultimately, when we're talking about Sigfredo Garcia, there was a breakup. There was many breakups, right? Yes, sir. But around the time of the homicide, Katie, who met this bad boy at a young age and had kids and forever tied herself to this man, she kicked them out. Yes, sir. You remember that? Yes, sir. But they stayed in constant communication because of the kids. Yes, sir. And, look, he, he was a bad husband slash boyfriend, but he was a good father, right? Of course. He provided. Yes, sir. He provided with cash support to Catherine. Yes, sir. For the kids. Yes, he did. You were asked about Instagram. You remember that, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. You're on a man approach? No. Mr. Rivera, I'm showing you the free market, but that's not. You know what that is, right? Yes, sir. You know that that's your, uh, a photo of your Instagram account. Yes, sir. And you know that that's a photo of your Instagram account because you set it up yourself. Yes, yes, sir. And that's a fair and accurate depiction of what one would see if they don't follow you on Instagram, but went and looked you up. Yes, sir. All right, so Mr. Rivera, you got 1,282 posts, 72 followers, 126 following, right? Yes, sir. Now, you you say that you told the, the government about this this post. They put out there, it was a lie. A what? You said that you, you put a post of a lion? Yes, but that's not the... A lion? I took a picture of a lion, yes. Okay. Let, let me back up because I don't want to confuse you. It wouldn't be fair to you. So, you said that you were in Tallahassee mm -hmm. and that you posted something and you alleged that Catherine got on the phone and was like, take it down, gave you an order, right? Yes, sir. People don't give the boss of the Latin King's orders, do they? She didn't give me no boss. She told him. 
All right. And you, and, and you followed this alleged order and you took it down, right? Yeah. Now, of course, the government then sent a subpoena to Facebook to get your records just like they did for Ms. McBanwa and Secreto Garcia, right? Yes, sir. They did do that? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'd be able to see if that actually ever happened, right? Yeah, I guess. Mr. Rivera, I want to talk to you about your mental health. You would agree with me that at a young age you were diagnosed as bipolar, right? Yes, sir. And with that comes things like mood swings. Yes, sir. Also, at around the age of 10 years old, you were diagnosed with schizophrenia. Yes, sir. And that comes with delusions and hallucinations, right? Yes, sir. Now, although you were diagnosed at the age of 10 years old, this is something that you live with throughout your life, right? Yes, sir. Back in 2004. Now, right now, you're getting treatment through the Bureau of Prisons, mm, right? No, sir. But back in 2014, you were self-medicating, right? Yes, sir. Although right, right now you're sober, but back then it was alcohol on every trip, right? Yes, sir. Cocaine every trip all the time, right? Yes, sir. And you were taking Molly like candy. Yes, sir. If you could explain to the jury what Molly is. I don't know how to explain that. Molly's, a, Molly's sort of like the drug ecstasy, correct? Like ecstasy, yep. It's sort of like the effects that you would have when you, when you take cocaine, right? That it enhances your mood. Yes, sir. Whereas other drugs bring you down, like the medications for those, those mental health illnesses. You're taking drugs that are ramping you up, right? Yes, sir. Now, we talked about the information that you gave against Wendy Adelson. Let's talk about the core of this case now. What you say or claim Catherine McBanois did, ultimately she is the one in the middle, right? Yes, sir. Now, the first thing, the first thing that you say is that you had conversations, and we're talking about the three points, three pieces of evidence that you claim to have against Ms. McBanois. Your conversations with Garcia, that, that Katie was hiring him, that's, that's part of your testimony, right? Yes, sir. That you were somehow just like an assistant. Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, I'm going to ask you an open-ended question. When did you find out it was going to be a murder? Halfway up here. You remember on October 4th, of 2016, right after you you enter into the deal to cooperate the day before, where you met with Agent Sanford, with Investigator Isom, with Investigator Monica Jordan, and your attorney, Mr. Collins, that you met with them all to give your proffer, your information about the case, right? Yes, sir. Now, before that meeting, you swore to tell them the truth and the whole truth, correct? Yes, sir. Your testimony a moment ago is that you found out halfway up here, right? Yes, sir. Jackson, Your Honor. Oh, 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 don't, uh, hold on a second. This hasn't been admitted into evidence. Correct, Your Honor. This is impeachment. What's your objection? Improper impeachment, Your Honor. There is a 30-second clip directly on this point. All right, you may proceed.
Yes, sir. I think yes, yeah. the story, he already told me the story. He went to the car and killed the pig on the same day. They go on my way. He picked me up in the car and went to my house, changed up, got in the car, and then we drove. Yeah. It was like Wednesday night and Wednesday. It was Wednesday. And he did it to the purpose of getting ready. The car was to drive to Tallahassee with him? Yes, sir. So he already told you, I'm going to bring a car? Or he shows up and says, I'm going to bring a car? He said, I got him in the car. You're ready to run the car. He said, I'm going to go in the car. Yeah. So you knew that the story, the first version, is he come up here to rob somebody? He's going to go in the car. Yeah. But it changed to murder mm-hmm. before or after he went in the car. No, before he went in the car. I remember who's in the house speaking about it. It's going to be down and it'll be off. I didn't want you to be confused until we're back and forth. Exactly. I'm not trying to. Yeah. So I'm going to be straight up. So I'm there. Let's just make sure that everything's all right. So, Mr. Rivera, your testimony and direct examination was halfway up there. Yes, but sir. in your statement that you made in 2016, years ago, your testimony was that there was a conversation at the house before the first trip, before the car was even rented, right? Yes, sir. Now, when you were asked that in that interview, you didn't say, well, look, I don't remember, but I think it was this, right? Yes, sir. And you didn't say that when the government asked you the question of it, right? Yes, sir. Your, the defense has a CD of that. It's been pre-marked as Defense 7. We'd like to offer it into evidence and offer the truth of the matter asserted. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. He's admitted to making the statement. How does it come in as, as evidence? And it's already been published, so I don't know what difference it makes, but I still don't think it's admissible. All right. It's marked as what exhibit? It's pre-marked as Defense 7. It will be admitted as Defense 7. Is that the entire interview? No, it's just that quote. We would prefer to enter in the entire, if the government would allow. We're not talking about that right now. Understood, Your Honor. So, Mr. Rivera, that's the first thing that we talked, that you talked about, that you gave to the government is, the direct evidence against Ms. McVan were your conversations with Garcia, right? And now the next thing that you claim is Garcia's calls with Catherine, right? Yes, sir. And one of those was the phone call that was placed after the murder, right? Yes, sir. Where you claim that, that he said it's done and that she says, I know. Yes, sir. Along those lines, right? Yes, sir. Again, you had your discovery, right? Through yes, your attorneys. Yes, sir. And in that, it had reports and it had an explanation that there was phone calls at certain times, right? Yes, sir. You didn't have to make up that the phone call happened, right? No. All you had to do is make up what was said. I didn't make up nothing. Let's talk, about the, the thir- Let's talk about the third thing. July 19th, Saturday morning. You claim that, that you were at the barbershop, right? Yes, sir. And that barbershop is called King Ray's. Yes, sir. And for the record, that's R-E-Y-E. And that's up on 135th and Biscayne, right? Yes, sir. So let's go through what you say happens the morning of July 19th. So you claim that Katie called you, right? Yes, sir. Now, the... The discovery, the reports, said that there was a phone call on July 19th between you and Catherine, right? Yes, sir. But it didn't say who called who, right? No. You say that she called you, but in fact, the call detail records and evidence showed that you called her. I didn't call her. Do you have any reason to believe that the cell phone records are inaccurate? I don't know nothing about no cell phone records. All right. So you then call Hebero. Yes, sir. Now, Hebro spelled H-I-B-A-R-O. Don't know how to spell it. But you do know that he's a Latin king. Was. He died in 2017. Yes, sir. After the murder and after your arrest and after your cooperation. Yes, sir. He goes by the name of King Anthony. Yes, sir. You had him go pick up Sigfredo Garcia. Yes, sir. 
to help them apparently get to Jessica's house for this meeting, right? Yes, sir. Now, you also claim that while you're at the barbershop, King Ray's, which is north of that little red dot, that Jessica Rodriguez called you, right? Yes, sir. And said, Katie and Garcia are at the house. Yes, sir. So you rush from King Ray's down to Jessica's house. You, you claim that you rush from right here down here, right? Yes, sir. Now, when you get there, you claim that, that Katie and Garcia are there, right? Yes, sir. You had your cell phone, the cell phone that you use on you when you were at the barbershop, right? And that, that's how these communications were happening. I have two happen. cell phones. But obviously, the phone that you're using to communicate with Miss McDonald, I don't want to see turn it off. The phone that you're using to communicate with Miss McDonald, obviously, you have that in your possession, right? It's not somebody else having those phone calls. I have one, and the other one had an Anthony. Okay. You have a phone on you that you're using to communicate. With Miss McBanlow, right? Yes, sir. What is your explanation to the jury why that phone that's communicating with Miss McBanlow is right there when the phone calls are happening in Normandy and not where you claim it to be? I have two phones. Anthony had more of the phone, and he's going that way to go pick up Tuto. It's right around the corner, not too far from each other. That same little area with shrimp lived at. Mr. Rivera, you've given one, two, Three, four, five, six. This is your 11th time testifying. Have you ever said that before? That you gave your phone to King Anthony and that's why your cell phone. I believe I said it one time before. It, it should be on record, but I have said it one time before. And it's been a long time, been eight years. So that same phone that went with you to Tallahassee, the same phone that you had that was using for all the communication, just so happens to be that that phone is not in your possession. The one that's communicating, just like you're saying, was communicating with Miss McBanwan that morning. Yes, sir. So then what's the other phone number? What's the other phone? I don't know the number. You never told them, right? I don't know the phone number. We don't have the cell phone records. I can't remember. If I remember the phone, I can't remember. It's been eight years total. Who's going to remember a phone number? So let's go back in time to October of 2016 when you did that recorded exactly. interview. Did you say anything about this? can't remember if I did or not. Your cooperation agreement is to give the complete truth, right? Yes, sir. Never said that, did you? can't remember. In fact, you claimed, you claimed that that number that ends in 8153, the one that's communicating with Ms. McGranwell, the one that was on Norman the Isle and doesn't fit your story, was in your possession, right? Yes. Now, let's talk about Jessica Rodriguez. She was interviewed about this meeting multiple times, right? You know that. Yes. About that morning. Yes, sir. Now, before they did one of the interviews, law enforcement allowed you to have a phone call with her from one of their phones that was unrecorded, right? Yes, sir. And then right after that, a female mm -hmm. investigator, Investigator Bennett, on a recorded phone, phone call that's recorded, had an interview with Jessica about what happened that morning. Right? Yes, sir. Have you heard what Jessica said happened? No. Now, going back to your discovery, the reports, you, you didn't have to make all this up, the communications, right? I didn't you just had to else. pepper in some small details so that you could get that deal, right? No. Everything I said was the truth. I didn't make you, nothing up. You didn't have the direction of the phone calls, but from the reports, you knew that there were phone calls in between certain people that morning, right? Yes. And that's why your story doesn't fit the evidence, right? Yes. Because you made up facts without knowing all the details. I didn't make nothing up. And you know the phrase that the devil is in the details, I right? I made nothing up. So let's talk about your, your prior meetings. Now, this is after you decide to cooperate. You meet with your attorneys a bunch. Basically, every time you called, they came, right? Something like that. Now, you had many meetings with law enforcement as well, right? Yes. On August 8, 2016, there was a setup where you're in a room with your attorneys. The agent, the federal agent, and Ms. Kappelman and other people, other prosecutors are in the other room, right? Yes. And messages are being passed between them and the other room. Your attorney's basically going from room to room 
passing the message back and forth. Yes, sir. You cannot remember the questions. No. You cannot remember the answers. <clears throat> no. It was unrecorded. Yes. But you agree with me that on that day, no deal was struck. No. On September 29, 2016, you have the same setup. Your attorney running back and forth in between the rooms. Right? Yes, sir. You're giving your version, all the, all the information. You, you base, you're showcasing what information you have, right? Yes. And it's unrecorded. Yes, sir. The following day, September 30th, there's a different setup where Agent Sanford, Investigator Isom, are in the room with you and they're actually talking to you face to face. Now you're giving your statement directly to law enforcement at that point, right? Yes, sir. You, they know you have your discovery, right? Yes, sir. And they don't record that statement. Right? Yes. On October 3rd, you meet with them again, and it again is unrecorded. Yes, sir. And it's not af until after all of those rehearsals on October 4th, the video that we saw, that you're finally recorded. Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, I need you to, to tell this jury the truth. Garcia came to you to commit this murder, but he didn't mention Katie, right? Katie been involved the whole time, though. Garcia came to you and he didn't mention who was hiring him, right? Yes, he did. Now, you knew that cooperating just against Sigfredo Garcia, it wouldn't help you, right? You, you said involved. that you know that. She's the mastermind. She was in the middle of this. But cooperating against Garcia, that's my question. You agree with me that that wouldn't help you? No, I don't agree with you with that. If you had just implicated Garcia, you already agreed. You would not have gotten a deal. You know that, right? Since day one, I mentioned her name. They laid it out for you who they wanted, right? No. They told you. you, you I gave him the truth, bro. I'm not going to go back and forth with you, man. I gave him the truth. Like it was Katie and Garcia. It was, it was all three of us was involved. Mr. Rivera, you, truth, man. Mr. Rivera, you've already agreed with me that you knew from the reports that the people that they wanted were Wendy Adelson and Catherine McBannon. You have already agreed with me that you were in a tough position and you already told this jury how that's true, but I'm still telling the truth. That I understand. Let me get the question one. out. Let me get the question out. And you've already told this jury, right, that in your federal case, you took it and ran. Because you can't fight the feds, right? That's true. And that's what you did here. You took it and ran with it. You took Katie's innocence. No, I'm not taking innocence. She's guilty just like all three of us are guilty, man. And the reason why you're okay and we're talking about the truth that we're hoping to get here, that you blame Garcia for all of this, don't you? For getting, for getting arrested. You blame him. Yes. He messed up. We all messed up. No, but he used the phone and he called and he called Harvey Adelson. You know about that, right? Who? You know that Sigfredo Garcia placed a phone call that ultimately got you caught, right? You know that. I can't remember that. Refresh my memory, please. Pages 237 to 238. Now, Mr. Rivera, you can't read, right? Yes, sir. I can't. So, now, just a quick question on that. And, and, and I'm not, I don't mean to make fun of illiteracy, but you, you went to high school until 15 or 16, right? Yes, sir. You then went to William Turner Tech High School, right? Yes, sir. Now, you, you went to masonry class and you, you got OSHA certified, right? Yes, sir. Certified operator. Yes, sir. Heavy equipment and machines. Yes, sir. And you had to take a written test. Yes, sir. At USP Tucson, you're going to school to get your GED. Yes, sir. And you got it, right? No, I wish I did. But you did get your license. We know that from the citation, right? Yes, sir. To get your license in the state of Florida, you have to take a monitored written exam. You just pay somebody and get your license and get out of it. You know people. I know people. And you're okay with doing things like that? I was fine with it. Cheating the system? I, I had to get my license some way, somehow, huh? Just like you had to get a reduction I didn't cheat, in your I didn't cheat this system. I told them about the truth. Okay. Now, Mr. Rivera... Is, is the reason why you're saying illiterate is because you don't want to be confronted with, with your words? No, I can't read, bro. I'm not going to keep throwing in. Thankfully, I thought about this. I got one second, Joe. Mr. Rivera, what I have for you here. Headset. Would you put that on? Is your arm on? No, I'm 
see what we got going on first. You're going to have somebody read it to him? Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Mr. Rivera, can you hear me? Mr. DeCos, if you're going to read it to him, it, you're still in front of the jury. Oh, no, no, Your Honor. I'd walk away. All right. So why don't I do this to make it clear? Because I know that you're on a one day to five. I'll save this topic. All right, and I'll move on to and I'll move on to a next one, and then I can give a stop and point because we're at a good one at the moment. All right, so Mr. Rivera, we're gonna come we're gonna come back to that, okay? But do you deny that you that you believe that Sigfredo Garcia messed up when he used the phone? Yes, sir. You disagree that he messed up by using the phone? Yeah, of course. If you used the phone, you messed up. Okay, okay. So then we don't have to go through this this whole process. You agree with me that he used the phone and ultimately that got you guys caught? Yes, sir. All right. And that gave you justification to take down him and his family, right? So nothing but the truth. Yeah. To take down him and his girl. You already told this jury, if you go against a Latin king, you're at risk. And so is your family, right? That's what you said. That's the code that you live by, right? Yes, sir. If he wronged you by getting you caught. Yes, sir. And you were able to justify taking him down and his family. Yes, sir. Garner, this would be a great point. To stop. Unless your honor wants me to keep going, but the next topic is it's hard to get into and stop in the next couple of minutes. All right. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Mr. Coast, you may continue with your cross examination. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Rivera, last night. When you left here, you went back to the jail, right? Yes, sir. When you go back to the jail, it's you, yourself, and your cell, right? Yes, sir. And it's been that way since you were arrested in 2016 on this case, right? Yes, sir. So what that means is you're not going through the daily activities that a person on the outside goes through, right? Yes, sir. You don't have to remember to turn off the stove, pick up the kids, stuff like that. Yes, sir. You don't have to remember to file your taxes to go to the doctors, go to the dentist, stuff like that, right? Yes, sir. It's been a matter of being in your cell with your thoughts, with your agreement with this office, right? Yes, sir. Your sole job since 2016 has to be to remember your testimony in this case. Yes, sir. Let's talk about guns. The June trip. There was two guns, right? Yes, sir. Both 38 caliber? Yes, sir. 38 Smith & Wesson short nose? Yes, sir. And a blue steel long nose Taurus? Yes, sir. Garcia had the blue steel? Yes, sir. You had the short nose? Yes, sir. You agree you, you, you bought that short nose? Yes, I did, sir. You bought it to come up here? Yes, sir. And you bought it from a, quote, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood from a black boy? Yes, sir. That's what you told law enforcement about where you acquired this gun. Yes, I did. And again, to make sure it's clear, you acquired this gun after a conversation with Garcia. Yes, sir. While he was renting the car to come here. Yes. And you don't know the name or even really a description of the guy that you got the gun from. No, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Latin Kings transfer and distribute guns. Yes, sir. On direct examination, Ms. Kappelman asked you, how many guns were brought for the murder trip, right? Yes, sir. And your answer was two. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you again. How many guns were brought for the second trip, your second trip, the murder trip? I can't remember. Would it help your, your memory to listen to your statement from October 4th of 2016? Yes, sir. If you could put on those headphones for me, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Rivera, did listening to yourself refresh your recollection? Yes, sir. I'll ask you again, how many guns were brought? One. All right, so now we have it. Not what you told the government and they asked you the question about two guns, now it's one gun. Yes, sir. I mean, we all make mistakes. It's been eight years. Memories. You forget stuff. Eight years? Who's going to remember? 
And again, the only thing that you've had to remember over the past eight years is your testimony. Hey, I want to sit down in my cell and think about this right here. Let's talk about the bullets. You bought those, correct? Yes, sir. You bought those at a gun store? Yes, sir. On Biscayne? Yes, I did. In between 112th and 117th? Yes, sir. The guns that we spoke about, there's the blue steel long nose and the short nose, the one that you bought. Yes, sir. All right, so the short nose that you bought, that gun was the one that was dumped. Yes, sir. And it was dumped, you say, near a bridge. Yes, sir. By Garcia. Yes, sir. On the ride home. Yes, sir. No. You claim that you wanted to help them find the murder weapon, right? Yes, sir. But in actuality, you never wanted them to find it. No, they... I don't know what bridge, so many bridges we passed through, I'm never going to... Correct me if I'm wrong, law enforcement knows the very precise route you took, so it's not a matter of checking all bridges in the state of Florida, correct? I'm not going to remember the bridge, sir. That's not my question. Law enforcement knows the precise route that you took home, right? I guess so. And they drove you on that precise route. Yes, sir. And you never pointed out the alleged bridge that the gun... I was just through so many bridges, sir. I'm not gonna remember. Just like I told them, I don't remember the bridge. This was your best attempt at helping them find the, the murder weapon in this case, right? Yes, you sir. drew this. Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about the amount of times that you went out looking with them. You haven't been out with them since 2016, correct? Yes, sir. And in fact, you only went out a couple of times, a couple of days, a couple of hours to look for this gun, right? I don't remember a couple of times, but I don't remember. Was it less than that? Maybe one time. One time you get into a van, they drive around, look at a couple of couple of bridges and then give up. I mean, I can't remember. Is there a is it the truth that you, you did what you said you were going to do, which is to put it away and bury that shit somewhere no one is going to find it but me. Yes, sir. You said that, right? Yes, I did. And that's what you did with this gun. No, sir. The gun was never found, right? I never dished it nowhere. I never threw it nowhere. That wasn't my job. You bought the gun. I bought the gun. You handled the gun. Handled it? Like what type of you talking about? Well, you remember how you told us that time that the guy walked in the hotel room and you picked up both guns and you pointed it at them? Yes, sir. All right, so you touched that gun. Yes, I did. And you gave vague information where it was acquired from? And you gave very little information as to where it was disposed of. You did that to protect yourself on both ends, didn't you? Not at all, sir. Now, you are aware that if law enforcement were to get that gun, you could be federally prosecuted. You know that. No, sir. Do you not know that? Do you not remember? Me being prosecuted if they find a gun? Do you not remember knowing that if they had that gun, they could tie it to interstate commerce. Do you not remember knowing that? I don't remember. Your Honor, if I could have one brief moment. Okay. Mr. Rivera, this young lady is just going to give you some assistance uh, with reviewing this transcript. Mr. Rivera, has your memory been refreshed? Yes, sir. And we were talking about why you would hide the origin and the disposal of the gun. And I had asked you about you being federally prosecuted, you were, you were aware and you know that if they have that gun, they could tie it to interstate commerce and federally prosecute you on this case. Yes, and it says that I'm not sure, but yes. Yes, that you are aware of that. Not sure if they could, but you're aware that it's, that it's a possibility. Yes, not sure if they could, but yes, I'm aware of it. And that's something that would be a concern because you can't fight the feds. Yes, sir. Now that gun, it would be evidence against you, right? Yes, sir. That you're the shooter. I'm not the shooter. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Mr. Rivera, your testimony is you drove off the driveway behind that car, and that Garcia got out, went inside, and shot Professor Markell, right? Yes, sir. But you knew that Professor Markell's window was up, right? Yes, I can see it. You also knew that he was on the phone when he got shot, right? I pulled up right behind him. I could see him. And you also knew, you happened to have the detail, that he raised his arm when he was shot in the face. I can see that too. 
Those are odd details for Sigfredo Garcia to shoot him, to jump back in the car and say, drive. Hey, and by the way, he was on his phone. The window was up and he raised his arm. I see everything, sir. I'm pulled up right behind him. When I was asking you questions about your, your testimony about claiming to see Wendy Adelson walk down that driveway and into the house the day before the murder, um, and I'm going to give this to you for context so you know where I'm going. You remember how, how I had asked you questions about your exchange with Garcia, how he said she's here to make sure it's getting done, how then he made a phone call to Catherine McVanwa, and he made that before noon on Thursday. Now, I asked you that question you didn't remember. Do you remember now? Was that phone call before noon on Thursday? I don't remember the time. Would it, would it help your memory if you were to listen to yourself from your recording on 10-4? Maybe. Did that help your memory? Yeah. And when was it that you said that this phone call happened? I said maybe by noon. All right. You said before 12 noon on Thursday, correct? Yes, sir. Those are your words? Yes, sir. So just to make sure that we have the context correct, from, so it's from yesterday. You have this alleged sighting, this alleged conversation with Garcia, and before you get back to the hotel, before 12 noon, he's on the phone with Katie finding out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You made all that up, didn't you? No, sir. Now, you were banking on the fact that Garcia, having children with Katie, is always on the phone with her, right? Yes, sir. In evidence, we have Kathy McBannell's cell phone records. And would you be surprised to learn that there is no phone call between Sigfredo Garcia and Kathy McBannell before 12 noon that day? Would you be surprised if I tell you they had throwaway phones? So your testimony now is that Kathy McBannell had a throwaway phone? They both had throwaway phones. Mr. Rivera, on October 4th, 2016, you gave the recorded statement, right? I don't remember. On November 29, 2016, you appeared before a grand jury in this case, correct? Yes, sir. On March 22nd, 2019, you appeared for a deposition in this case, correct? Yes, sir. January 31st, 2018, the year before, a, sec a different deposition in this case, correct? Yes, sir. You sat in that chair before, back in 2019, on October 1st and October 2nd, correct? Yes, I did, sir. And you have never made that claim before that there was a disposable phone? I believe I have. Isn't this you just evolving your story to, to keep up for the, the mistakes? No, sir. Let's talk about cars. Let's focus now on the June trip. Aren't your words the first time we came up, I never drove the car at all? I never drove the first car. Showing you what's been entered in is State Exhibit 65. First driven in June, correct? Yes, sir. You get a citation for driving that car, right? Yes, sir. And in fact, you were alone in that car because you were alone on the first trip. No, sir. Not at all. So you get a citation, but you weren't driving the car. That's for Sigfredo. So Sigfredo was driving, but you get the ticket? He was with me. I think we had changed. I think we had stopped somewhere, if I remember. I think we had stopped, and we just, just for that moment, I drove a little bit. Isn't this your testimony evolving again? You make a mistake, it's you change It's the same answer I gave since day one, man. You're not going to sit here and try to confuse me back and forth. Mr. Rivera, didn't you just so, say two minutes ago to this jury you never drove the first trip? I can't really remember, but now that you say it, yeah, I mean, when I got the ticket, if that was the first car, I guess. You remember everything she asked you, but not what I present you with, right? I tell her the same thing I tell you. If I don't remember, I don't remember. If I say yes, yes, say no, it's no. You know, you make no mistakes about the alleged claims against Ms. McVanwa, but when presented with evidence showing that you're wrong on details, then, oh, I, I don't remember. I'm not wrong, bro. Not at all, sir. Everything I say is nothing but the truth. Let's keep going. That's right. You have the June trip. You have the murder trip. Mr. Rivera, how many trips were made for the purpose of this, this killing? Actually, let, let's wait on that for a second. We'll come back in a minute. On direct examination, you testified that the the purpose of the June trip, this one, where you got the citation being a passenger, um, that the purpose of the first trip was to scout it out. 
That was your testimony yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, you appeared before a grand jury back in 2016, correct? Yes, sir. And it was for the purpose of, this is after you get your deal, it was for the purpose of indicting Ms. McVanwell, right? Yes, sir. I wasn't there, right? We're in the courtroom. No defense attorneys were there, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. None of us were there. You are. Yes. Asking you questions. Yes, sir. There was a court reporter taking down your words, correct? Yes, sir. And you swore to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Ms. Capman asked you the question. Okay, and what was the purpose of the first trip to Tallahassee? Answer. The purpose of the first trip was to do the murder the first trip. Question, to do the murder? Answer, yeah, but I didn't want to do that. We were supposed to scope out the place, and if it would have got done, it would have got done that day, but it never happened. So Your testimony happen. years back was the purpose of the June trip, when you were alone, was to do the murder. That was your testimony, right? To do the murder. Yes. But when she asked you yesterday, it's a different answer. It's probably been years, man. I can't remember. When you're in your cell. I don't think about this. Tell you that one more time. I don't sit in my cell and think about this. So don't ask me that question again. You're repeating yourself over and over. Mr. Vera, let's talk about trips. There was the June trip and then the murder trip, right? Those are two of the trips. Yes, but I'm going to ask you an open-ended question. How many trips were there to Tallahassee for the purpose of killing Professor Markell? Two trips. I believe it was two trips that I said. Two trips, right? Yes, sir. You remember a few years back, Ms. Kawas and I coming out to Arizona to take your deposition in USB Tucson, right? Yes, sir. We sat in a room, Ms. Kawas, Ms. Kaplan, myself, you, and a court reporter, right? Yes, sir. You were sworn in before that deposition. You swore to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, right? Yes, sir. You have a cooperation agreement where you have to give truthful testimony, complete testimony, right? Yes, sir. And the court reporter took down all of your words. Yes, sir. Do you remember me asking you, like Sigfredo, you were coked up and drinking the whole trip? You, the whole trip and back out every day. Me, this is the first trip in June, the witness. The first trip in June, the second trip, the third trip. Every time we went up there, we was always coked up and drinking. Me, there was a third trip. You, we're going to get to that. There was only two trips. You slipped up, didn't you? No, sir. See, your discovery, your, the reports that you got from their office only talked about two trips, right? Yes, sir. So that's why your testimony was there was only two trips. There's only been two trips. But when you were asked questions on a different topic, you couldn't keep your story straight. And you said, we, not they, we. The first trip in June, the second trip, the third trip, every time we went up there, we was always coked up and drinking. Those are your words, right? Yes. I wasn't tricking you, right? We asked you a straightforward question about drugs and alcohol, and you said third trip. Two trips. Which is inconsistent with the information that you had received in your discovery before you cooperated. Two trips. Now, Mr. Rivera, in all your other prior times, October 4th, January 31st, November of 2019, or I'm sorry, November of 2016, October 1st and 2nd, 2019, no mention ever of a third trip. I don't remember that third trip. You would agree with me if you were to change your testimony to slip off. No, sir. And it were to be found that there were a third trip, that you would be in violation of your cooperation agreement with that office. No, sir. You don't agree with me that if they were to find out there were a third trip, that you would be in violation of the agreement where you must give the truth and the complete truth. I only came out twice. That's not my question. You would agree with me that if you left out a vital fact, a vital trip, that you would be in violation of your agreement. Yes. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Now, 
you've previously sat in that same seat and tried to repair that mistake, haven't you? No, sir. You haven't sat up there before and said, you know what? It was Sigfredo Garcia and King Anthony that made a trip. You, you've never said that before? Yes, sir. Now you're trying to remember my, my memory's coming back. Yeah. Okay. What's that third trip you're talking about? That he came up with somebody else, not me. So there is a third trip. I remember, now that you say it, yeah, I remember saying that. But you're saying that I came up here three times. I only came out twice. That third trip was somebody else. You need to say the whole story. You're just saying half of the thing. I, I said three. I only came up three times. Come sir, on, though. I wasn't there. I don't know the truth. I just but if it's in that paper, read it out right. Okay. We. You understand what we means, right? Yes. Not they. We. Yeah. Okay. But you then tried to correct that because, again, you'd be in violation of that agreement. It was, no, no, Sigfredo Garcia and King Anthony. That's what we're focusing on right now, that you have previously said that there was a third trip, Sigfredo Garcia and King Anthony, right? Yes, sir. And you know that because apparently Sigfredo Garcia told you that there was this third trip. Yes, sir. You see the stack of paperwork in front of me, right? I see all that. You, you, you've given sworn testimony 10 times before. Yes, sir. The closest that you've gotten to ever mentioning that third trip was the we statement. And then in October of 2019, in your recorded interview, October of 2016, you never mentioned a third trip, right? I think I did. Mr. Rivera, uh, your October 4, 2016 statement um, is roughly three hours, correct? I don't remember. So it should be in your statement, right? It should be. It definitely wasn't in your discovery, right? I don't know. I can't read, so I never read that discovery. Yeah, but you had two attorneys and they reviewed it with you. I mean, it's been a long time, sir. So, in the years, let's sidetrack for a moment. In the years, you've had tons of meetings, since your cooperation, tons of meetings with their office, correct? Yes. You've sat down for hours on end with investigator Jason Newland, their investigator, not Tallahassee Police Department, with Jason Newland reviewing your testimony. Don't remember you reviewing no testimony, but I don't remember that. So all the times that there are orders to transport you from jail to their office wasn't for the purpose of reviewing your testimony. I mean, yeah, we review, but you talking about my discovery and testimony and all that? No, what I'm talking about is specifically your testimony. It's specifically whether you ever told Jason Newland about a third trip. I don't remember. Okay. So you don't remember whether you told Jason Newland, Agent Patrick Sanford, or Investigator Craig Isom about a third trip? I remember telling them. So you told them about this third trip? Yeah, not, I don't think Jason was there. Okay, so you told, all right, you told Agent Sanford and Investigator Isom about this third trip between Sigfredo Garcia and one of your Latin King brothers? Yes, sir. All right. You would agree with me that if you didn't, if you never mentioned that, that you would be in violation of your cooperation agreement. Yes, sir. Let's talk about your communication with the outside world when you're in federal custody. When you were in Coleman, if you could explain to the jury what Coleman is. Coleman is a federal, as a Coleman one, it's an act of your life. It's a real violent yard. They don't play over there. So, back in 2016, before you're charged in this case, you're in Coleman, correct? Yes, sir. And you agree with me that you're able to get access to both legitimate and illegitimate phones while in Coleman, right? Yeah. That you were able to have a uh, three way call with Sigfredo Garcia through one of your brothers. I ain't never called him on the phone. I'm sorry? I never spoke to him on the phone or did a three-way. It was like a right. like a text. Now. Like a text service. Now, that and some of that happened through a guy named Leanback, correct? Yes, sir. Now, Leanback is a king. Yes. And you would send emails through the system that you have in federal mm -hmm. custody to Leanback, and then he would send out texts on your behalf. Probably sound like one email, probably. Now, in May of 2016, 
starting in May of 2016, you're able to communicate via this, this messaging system with Sigfredo Garcia, correct? Yes. Now, during that time, you're also communicating with Jessica Rodriguez, the mother of your children, correct? Of course. And you're doing that through email? Yes, sir. And on May 10, 2016, right around the time of the wiretaps, you email her asking for Garcia's cell phone number. Yes, sir. Do you agree or do you deny that then in May 2016, Sigfredo Garcia is receiving text messages from somebody saying this is Tato? Yes, sir. And that's you, right? Yes, sir. And that's you sending those messages? Yes. Let's stay on the topic of Garcia. Where Garcia lived. He was living on 186th and Biscayne, correct? Yes. There's a period of time that he was living with King Anthony, right? Probably. If you remember. Probably, I think so. Around the time of 2014. Yeah. Now let's stay on the topic of Secreto Garcia. we we'll talk about Catherine. He loved her, right? Mm-hmm. Still he loves did. her. He sure did. Crazy about her. Yes. Would do anything for her. Of course. You have known Sigfredo Garcia your entire life, right? Yes, sir. You refer to him as brother. Yes, sir. Now, this isn't just something that you guys hang out on the weekends. You very much are together in the same community hanging out. Yes, sir. You know everything about each other. Yes, sir. You know his reputation in the community. Yes, sir. You know that his reaction if somebody were sleeping with Katie, he'd confront them, right? Of course. Try to run him over. Yes, sir. You agree with me that it is in Sigfredo's character that he would find somebody that's sleeping with Katie, right? Yes, sir. And hurt them. Yes, sir. Meaning, meet them face to face. Yes, sir. Let's talk now about the dentist and Catherine. You agree with me that Garcia knew about the relationship. Yes, sir. He knew about the relationship with the dentist. Yes, sir. He told you that he knew about it. Yes, sir. And he also told you he was her boss. The dentist was her boss. Yes, sir. And he knew the guy's name. Yes. You would agree with me that Sigfredo Garcia was angry, right? Yes, sir. And he was jealous. Yes, sir. Now, because of this, because the love of his life was with somebody else, Sigfredo Garcia does well with women, correct? Yes, sir. Very much a lady. Yes, sir. He's got real, real light green eyes, right? Yes, sir. Almost like lime green. Yes, sir. Girls flock to him. Of course. Charismatic guy, right? Yes, sir. Very, very well-spoken, very tough guy, right? Yes, sir. But for the first time, there was a, he had some competition. Yes, sir. Because the guy that he was in competition with had the one thing that he doesn't have, which is finances. Yes, sir. Although Sigfredo, being the guy that, that, that was very good with women, he was never really financially secure, right? Yes, sir. So because of this, Sigfredo, for the first time, in actual jeopardy of losing Catherine, he was going through a lot, right? Yes, sir. He was desperate. Yes. He was drinking. Every day. He was doing coke, like every day, right? Every day. And he was doing it more than usual. Yes, sir. It wasn't usual for him to do it every day, but... He was off. He, he, he was not himself. Yes, sir. He was fighting a lot. Every day. And this is around the time of 2014 when they're broken up. So between the end of 2013, half of 2014, he's losing it, right? Yes, sir. He's violent and erratic. Yes, sir. He actually went so far as to stalking the dentist, right? Yes, sir. And you remember a specific time. We're in that truck, right? Yes, sir. That black Dodge truck that you guys went to a restaurant, right? Yes, sir. And what you saw was Catherine Banwa sitting outside with the guy that she was dating, and he was flipping up. Yes, sir. He was furious, right? Yes. He actually wanted to take that truck and run over the dinner party that they were with, right? Yes. He was so angry, you had to stop him. 
Yes, sir. Now let's make sure that we have the context. Before the murder, they're broken up, right? Yes, sir. And then right after the murder, they're back together, right? Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera. Garcia played you, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes. He confronted Charles. What you mean confront Charles? Like you said was in his nature, that this guy would confront the guy that was in between him and the woman that he loved. Yeah. That was his nature to do that, right? Yes, sir. Like you said was in his nature. Yes, sir. Like he told you he would do. Yes. And that confrontation turned into a negotiation between him and Charles Adelson. Yeah. Right? You think they spoke? You've told us that this guy would absolutely confront that other guy, right? Of course. And it would be very awkward. What I'm saying is that Sigfredo Garcia came to you with a job, but he never told you it was for. He couldn't tell you, hey, that guy that I just wanted to run over, we're going to do a job for him. Because you as a Latin King boss, you would say, that doesn't make any sense. The government told you Katie was involved, right? No, sir. No, sir. You went along with it. No, sir. Because you can't fight the feds. No, sir. So you took it and ran. No, sir. She's been involved the whole time. It's the only one he speaks to. I'm sorry? It's the only girl he speaks to is Katie. Whatever she tells him to do, he jumps and do it. That's his weakness. Her right there. 